If you use a lot of mobile apps, you've probably noticed that a lot of apps now are offering the option to log in using biometrics. That's where you can use your fingerprint or your face ID to log into an app without having to remember a password. And in theory, this is a lot more secure than a password because it's not very easy to steal someone's fingerprint or face ID without them knowing it. But if those biometric systems aren't implemented correctly, it's possible to completely bypass that system and log into someone's account without needing their password or their fingerprint or anything. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can bypass biometrics and I'm gonna show you how you can do it in both iPhone and Android. First, I'm gonna show you how to do this on iOS. And to demonstrate this, I'm gonna be using this app called the Damn Vulnerable iOS app. And you can download it off GitHub. I'll put the link in the description. And this is just an intentionally vulnerable app that is used for practice and examples and different things and shows you how you can bypass different sorts of security checks. And one of the things among the list of things you can do with it is bypass biometrics. And I will mention right here that I'm going to be using a jailbroken iOS 15 device, and you do have to have a jailbroken device to do this. I believe either there was some protections introduced in iOS 16, or there are just not enough advancements yet in the jailbroken community in order to allow us to do this yet on those later versions. But in my experience, I believe this is not possible yet in iOS 16 or later. But the first thing I did was just download this IPA file and then I had to re-sign it and then install it on my phone using iOS deploy. If you don't know how to re-sign IPA files or sideload them onto your device, I made a video about that recently and I'll leave a card up here in the corner. So if you wanna check that out, just pause this video, go watch that, come back and I'll be here when you're finished. But once we have that app installed on our phone, the first thing we need to do is find the package name. So I'm gonna do that with frida-ps dash capital U lowercase I a and that's just going to list all the apps on the phone and over on the right side is going to show us the package name and if we look down here we see dviav2 and then the package name is going to be coresecure.dviA but that package name would be different for you even if you use the same app that's just the package name that I gave it when I re-signed my app but now that we have the package name of our app and I have my iPhone plugged into my MacBook with a USB cable I'm going to use a tool called Objection, which I've used many times in the past on this channel. And I'm just going to run Objection-G, that package name, and Explore. And when I run that, it launches the app on the phone and it pulls up this Objection interface. And over on the phone, I'm going to go over to the menu and I'm going to go down to Touch Face ID Bypass. And I'm going to click Start Challenge. And it gives us two different options for a Touch ID. It gives us a Swift implementation and an Objective-C implementation. And we're going to try to do both of them. And right now I haven't actually done any bypass yet. So if I just click on the Swift implementation, for example, it's gonna ask for my Touch ID. And my thumbprint is the ID that I have stored in my phone. So if I press the Touch ID with that, it's successful. But if I press it again and I use my index finger, which is not stored in the phone as a fingerprint ID, then try again, please authenticate yourself, and it just won't work. It doesn't work with anything except my right thumbprint. But now with objection, we're going to start that bypass, and it's a very simple command. It's just iOS UI biometrics bypass. And when I run that, it starts that bypass process, and now if I click the Swift implementation, it's going to ask for the Touch ID again, and if I put my index finger on the sensor, it says try again, but this time if I hit cancel, success. So it doesn't actually matter what happens on the fingerprint sensor at this point. You can see in the logs here that the OS authentication response was false. So that means the authentication failed, but objection because it did that instrumentation at runtime, it changed that response and said marking the OS response as true instead. And because this was a poorly implemented version of biometrics, it just takes that at face value and says, well, it says that it was true, so it was obviously true and we're gonna let you in. And this also works for the Objective-C implementation as well. So if I click on that one and I hit cancel instead of putting my thumbprint on the sensor, success. Next, I'm gonna show you how to bypass biometrics on an Android app. And I'm actually gonna show you two different ways to do it because there are two fairly common misconfigurations that you find in Android apps with biometrics. So if the first one I show you doesn't work for your app, then keep watching and try the second one and maybe that one will work instead. 
To demo these two bypasses, I'm just going to use this little insecure banking demo app that you can download off GitHub. And it just has two buttons on it. And both of them just bring up a biometric authentication option. And then you have to bypass them using the two different options that I'm going to show in this video. And just to show you how this works, I have already saved my right index finger as my touch ID for this device. And when I touch touch for login, it's going to ask for my fingerprint and I'm going to put my index finger and it says fingerprint bypass successfully. But if I were to say, put my middle finger on there, not recognized, and then I'm going to press exit, the app just crashes. And it does the same thing for touch for exception. It's just going to use a different type of bypass method to bypass that one. But again, do the wrong finger, not recognized. Do the index finger, recognized. But if I were to just press exit, app crashes. Both of these bypass methods that I'm going to show involve using Frida scripts. And the first one that I'm going to use is this fingerprint bypass.js script. And I'll have these scripts in the description if you want to check them out. But since we are using Frida on Android, we are going to have to start the Frida server on our device first. I've made several videos talking about Frida and how to set it up. So if you want to check those out, they're on my channel. But we're just going to go into our ADB shell on our device and we're going to find our Frida server file and we're going to run that. And then we're going to use frida-ps to find our package name, just like we did on iOS. And in this case, our package name is com.stevens.insecurebankingfingerprint. But now that we've downloaded our Frida script and we have the package name for our app, now we're going to run frida-l, the name of our script, dash f, and then the package name for our app, and then dash u because our device is plugged in over USB. And then it's going to launch our app on our device and I'm going to press touch for login and it just automatically logs in. You can see in the logs that it hooked that fingerprint manager authenticate method and then it just completely bypassed that whole mechanism because it was misconfigured to only work on the client side and it wasn't using proper cryptography it was able to just hook that method and then completely bypass it. Now the second method, it actually exploits a different type of misconfiguration that still has to do with cryptography, but it actually deals with how it handles exceptions where it fails. And if you look up any documentation and stuff about this, you'll probably find some uh, references to a free script, such as this one I'm looking at right now. And this link will take you to this link right here, which is a different free script. But if you've tried this one before, you may have run into some issues. I have run into issues where it just wasn't working correctly and it would throw errors and stuff. But I've looked through a lot of bug reports and issue tracking on GitHub. We don't have to get into all the weeds of why it doesn't work anymore and what needs to be changed. All you really need to know is there's a new script that you can find on the free to code share that seems to work now. And hopefully it will continue working in the future. But who knows, things can change at any time, and this one might need to be tweaked and edited to get to work later on. But for now at least, this one seems to work for me. So again, we're going to use Frida, but this time we're going to use Frida and then dash dash code share, and then the link to that script that I just showed you in the code share. Again, I'll have the link in the description if you want to check it out. Then dash F and the package name that we used for the last script, and then dash U again because we are connected over USB cable. And when we run that, again, it's going to launch the app. And again, it's hooking that authenticate method. And this time we're going to press the second button, touch for exception. But this time, instead of immediately bypassing the fingerprint, it's actually going to ask us for the touch ID. But in our terminal, we're going to run bypass and we're going to hit enter. And this time we're going to press exit and it successfully bypassed via exception handling. So this time it actually did have to send that signal for touch ID and we had to cancel it. And then because it was misconfiguring how it handled exceptions, it was able to take that failed signal of hitting the exit button and then manipulate it in order to getting us to that successful bypass. So all these bypasses I've shown you, the one using objection for iOS and then the two using Frida on Android, all of them involve some misconfiguration where they're not properly using cryptography or not using the keychain. So it is possible to implement secure biometric authentication using your fingerprint or your face ID. And there's tons of documentation from Apple and Android on how to do it properly. 
but there are a lot of developers out there that cut corners or they don't quite understand how the biometrics work with cryptography or the keychain or all those kind of things that you need to handle when you're doing this kind of stuff. But I hope you found this interesting. I always think authentication bypasses are cool and a fun thing to test. So if there are any other kind of things like this or similar bypasses that you want me to cover in the future, let me know and I'll try to see what I can do.